right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Chris McShannon, who is actually just over, over the border in Arizona and Phoenix. How are you doing, Chris? Exactly. I'm doing yeah. fantastic, John. How about yourself? Yeah, yeah, very good. And I'm sure things are starting to cool a little in Phoenix. I've been in Phoenix. I've been in Phoenix during the summer. And that's, uh, tell you, that's something else. <laughs> not fun, not fun. I was actually just in San Diego last week. So I'm, I'm very jealous of you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And so Chris is a BVA, Biz VA uh, president and chief operating officer, a transformational leader who brings extensive expertise in delivering successful business solutions to innovative and scalable solutions. And what we're going to talk today is about leveraging virtual assistance for all types of business. So, um, Chris, um, maybe we just start out like bottom line and just explain the concept of, of virtual assistance. I mean, I know people have heard of it and whatever, but just for some people who may not be uh, uh, au fait with it, just can you uh, explain what a virtual assistant is? Certainly, really, if you think about it, any task that doesn't require direct interaction or touch from from a uh, client or a patient perspective, because we work in both the healthcare and the business space. And so it's those back office functional needs, you know, bookkeeping, administrative support, sales, phone calls, all that back office function work that as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, you delegate to folks within your office. Mm -hmm. You can do that just as well virtually. If anything, we've met, we've learned through the pandemic and others that you can handle a lot of work remotely uh, with folks. And so it's all those administrative back office functions that don't require in-person interaction. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, and you know, there's such a, it's, it's so great nowadays that you can, you can do all of that. And it's fantastic for, for entrepreneurs or businesses of all size, quite frankly, because I think what it allows today is for you to make that decision about what are core employees that I really need and like core Correct. to the business and what are ones that I can I can leverage this kind of hybrid model with? Um, so, how do you, when you talk to people, when you talk to um, your clients, how do you help them uh, figure out what they should use virtual for? That's a great question, John. And so, what I traditionally talk to our clients say, what what is holding you back? Mm -hmm. And the way we articulate it is, you know, wouldn't you love to do more dreaming? And if you're dreaming about business growth strategy, how do I move the business forward? Let us take care of the eating, meaning the back office functions that are repetitive, process driven that we could take care of on behalf of you as a, a client and entrepreneur so that you can be getting focused on how do you grow and move the business to the next level and dream about how things could be better. And so that's what I traditionally talk to a lot of our clients about is what's holding you back? What's holding back your growth today? What could we do to really support that? And what are the pain points you have? And most of them talk about staffing, can't find the right person, cost of staffing, having people turn up. And that's one of the beauties of what we've put in place is we have a dedicated team that really works alongside of our entrepreneurs and our clients to do the heavy lifting of handling the staffing needs so that you can be doing what's most important to drive your business forward. Yeah. And I mean, let's face it. I mean, it's a, as we know, like recruiting and hiring just regular like people has always been kind of challenging and, and time consuming and a lot more challenging and time consuming than one would like. Uh, so now with, with virtual recruiting, I guess that's where people like you come in because some right. business may, may not understand even how to go about this or how to know whether I'm getting the right virtual service or, or not, because let's face it, there's been an explosion of them. Correct. And so what I've, we've intentionally done is we build the businesses. We don't just find people and then place them with you. We bring the folks on. We go through recruitment. We compliance. We train them. We have our own university that we educate them on. And then we have VA managers that work with our VAs to provide them ongoing coaching. At the same time, we have dedicated account managers that work with our clients to help with the onboarding process and are there to really assist you through the journey. And if you have any issues with your VA or any concerns, they're your point of contact to really take care of it. So you're not left by yourself. Our goal is really to take care of that heavy lifting to, and to be your business partner to help your business grow. I mean, I have clients that have one VA all the way up to 70, 80 VAs. And really what we've seen through leveraging that is, you know, cost savings of about $80,000 per switch from an in-house to a VA. 
uh, as well as on top of that, a productivity improvement of about 40% when you think about the dedication of these teams, because our, our model is that we provide you a dedicated resource. So it's the same person if they're handling your phone calls. It happens every day. We, we have a dedicated person for that. And then also, I've seen my clients experience up to a 50% revenue growth purely by having folks that can follow up on tasks, whether it be accounts receivable, you know, handling any of the client issues and being responsive to your clients when they need you. So. Mm-hmm. It's really been a game changer for a lot of our clients. And I, and I think the other part too, uh, Chris, is that, uh, I mean, I think this started around the financial crisis, but it's certainly then the pandemic and accelerated it. But this idea where, you know, where people sort of looked at, uh, at, at the way they normally go about like, uh, getting a job at a company, right? Move to move Correct. to somewhere that's commutable or a horrendous commute, whatever. Maybe get a mortgage in a high cost area to try and be close to to a physical building. Yeah. Go in, waste all that time commuting, and guess what? First sign of trouble, you're out the door. Now you're stuck living in a high cost area with no job. So people exactly. are voting with their feet, and they're going, "No, I'm going to go find somewhere that suits my lifestyle or whatever, and then I'm going to go find a job." So the fact is. There may well be, and I think this is the case, a, you know, a higher caliber of talent actually available virtually than there is physically. 100%, John. If you think about it, I have access to a global workforce that I can make available to my clients mm. to really focus on what's most important. So if you're like, I need somebody to really handle my social media, they don't need to physically be there, but I can get access to those folks and provide them to you as a managed service I take care of them. You know, they work on your behalf or your direction, but I have access to folks around the globe that could be the best and brightest for you at a reduced Mm -hmm. cost, right? When you think about the labor arbitrage across the world. So you're 100% correct. And if we've learned anything as we've moved to this remote working, uh, you are a lot of folks are wanting to, you know, work remotely. And a lot of clients, it's it's cost advantage for them, not only on just the pure labor cost, but the reduction in, in, uh, Real estate and all the other pieces that go along, you're trying to keep people in a central, like you said, high cost location. Yeah, and and one of the one of the other parts too is, I mean, jobs are becoming more specialized. This is how you know things are becoming more technical. I mean, even see AI coming out now. They're saying there's going to be jobs for people just to write prompts, right? Um, but my my yeah. point is that when you hire somebody internally, you often uh, hire them for a job, but there's, there's not enough work for them. Right. For per- So you end up giving them other things to do that they're probably not very good at instead of going and finding one person who is absolutely, you know, an expert at this and then leveraging them fractionally. Exactly. That's, that's really the key thing, right? If you think about it, you've got a need and we can fulfill that need and we can bring the specialist to bear to drive that. And so instead of having, like you said, having somebody who's trying to be a jack of all trades, that's where we really see the productivity gains of leveraging a VA to, let's say, for example, handle phone Mm -hmm. calls. And so they're available. They're not distracted with other tasks. They can be responsive to client requests that come in either during regular business hours or after hours. So you're not losing any clients as they come into the business. And you're not losing opportunities because, you know, what we've seen, you know, uh, indicative is, you know, if you don't get picked up in the first five to seven calls, they're moving on to the next one. And so just think about all the business you're losing by not getting patient communication, whether it be via phone or chat or on a social media side of things. And so just that responsiveness, we've seen a huge improvement for our clients. So what are some of the, uh, I mean, because, you know, some people are slow, obviously, to adopt things or, or, you know, have that control issue where, oh, this is disappearing outside of my control somewhere there into the ether. How do you help, how do you help, you know, your clients with that transition to being able to, operate a hybrid organization and be comfortable with that? That's a a great question, John. So what we do is we really, as I said, kind of have a conversation, understand the pain points. Think about what are the things that are holding your business back? Is it, Mike, I can't be responsive to my clients. Uh, You know, my accounts receivable is running out of control. I don't have a good handle on my financials. I don't have a good visibility, uh, you know, on a social media or website. All of those things that you determine as a business owner are holding you back you know, we can come alongside and support those. And so we walk through uh, kind of the tasks that a VA can do for you. And one of the things I'd be happy to share with you and you can pass on to mm-hmm. your listeners is the 250 tasks, common tasks that a VA can do for you, whether it be in the legal space, real estate, property management, you know, construction, any of those areas are definitely in areas where a VA can come alongside and really take care of your existing clients or your new clients as they come in, as well as your existing business, whether it be bookkeeping, 
uh, you know, in AP, AR, those kind of things for you to really ensure that you're allowed to go focus on the strategic things and driving the business and value, value creation while we take care of you know, the back office functions that uh, run the day-to-day business and operations of your organization. Yeah, and, and I think that's, uh, I think that's critical because, uh, as, as I said, like business has become more complex. There's a lot more moving parts. There's a lot more specialization in it. And it's very easy to get trapped in the weeds um, rather than, as you said, is start to look at uh, what parts of my business Correct. can I outsource uh, and for more efficiency and allowing, as you said, allowing me to to work in the business um, without obviously without naming names here, but can you give me a couple of examples of, of clients that you've had and, and the difference it's made for them and maybe the surprise, maybe how surprising it was for them that the difference it made. So I mean, it's interesting because we're seeing a lot of work in the kind of what I, the private equity space. And so we've got a, a n- mm-hmm. number of private equity clients that as they acquire, you know, uh, whether it be clinics or they acquire, um, businesses coming alongside and saying, okay, here's a repeatable model that we can kind of put in place uh, to leverage it. And so, you know, there's some clients you know, on the healthcare side that are very large kind of private equity backed uh, where we've seen, you know, cost savings, like I said, around $80,000 per VA. So you think about if I have five of those, that's $400,000 of reduction in your cost, you know, your staffing cost, let alone the productivity savings. And so we've had organizations, kind of industry, kind of Fortune 100, all the way down to kind of mum and pup shops that we've seen huge impacts in. You know, um, we've got one client in particular I was just kind of talking with that's in the construction area. And so being able to turn around quotes and responses to to clients as they look for, you know, handyman work and or even complete house remodels, just having somebody available. Uh, we have a client on the real estate side you know, being able to make real estate investments and doing property management, having somebody remotely take care of all their properties while also researching new properties that they could be acquiring and being first to market to do those. That's just a couple of examples Mm -hmm. of some of the areas where, you know, the really game changes because not only are you being more productive, but you've got more revenue growth coming in at a lower cost base. And I I guess one of the other things that it does force people to be, and that is to define their processes and to be more process driven, because obviously before you can outsource things, you need to make sure that you have the process or you've laid it out, um, you know, so that that person can be successful. Correct. And so it drives a a force of discipline, right? Because where the VAs work best is kind of high process, repeatable businesses, right? Mm -hmm. Repeatable tasks like, financial accounting, like, you know, social media posts and updates, uh, content development, uh, like I said, talking on the phone, phone calls, as well as, you know, you know, on the legal side, we've got a couple of really large legal firms that use the team just to do legal transformation. And so all the forms that, that get done, uh, all the work that happens from an intake specialist, document retrieval, kind of case management, paralegal, demand writing, all those forms that are consistent and repeatable in that space. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's it's very tempting, obviously, nowadays for people to, you know, with particularly with uh, all the hype around AI is to think, oh, well, now I can use AI for these kind of things. Now I can use I can use uh, AI, I can use bots or whatever. But what I still think that the, the human element is so, so critical. And that's really what people what people want and why you can use these other, uh, you know, you can use these technologies in a supportive way. That human Correct. element is still absolutely critical. So, if somebody is considering doing configuring their business a little differently, I would totally encourage them to look at you know virtual human human resources. Well, you think about yourself whenever you interact with you know you pick up the phone and they put you through an automated process. How frustrating mm-hmm. that can oh. be! Yeah. Or if you are actually talking to somebody and it turns out it's an AI a bot, how frustrating it can be, and then you lose so many customers. By leveraging these folks, you know, you get that human personal touch. And a lot of our folks, a majority of them are out of the Philippines, which has is the third largest English speaking country in the world and probably has the best customer service. Mm. And so we've intentionally invested in that area to really attract those folks, as well as we have teams from Latin America from a bilingual perspective and other languages we support. But just that touch, you know, I think, you know, as we've we've started to go to a remote world, we're all very comfortable remote, but we still want that human interaction of that human touch. And that's where I think our team comes alongside and adds that with a level of technology, a level of automation and productivity improvement. 
Yeah, and you see, I mean, I think that's the that's the perfect one is that you do get your processes right. You use technology to support, and then you put the human, um, you put the human in front of of the other human. Right. <laughs> so, if you like, exactly. uh, I think I think that's uh, critically important. So, where do you where do you see this? Putting on your your futuristic hat and looking in your crystal ball, where do you see your 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 type of business going in the future? Really, where, where we see the business because we're adding about 100 employees a month and about 50 clients, and, and right. it's growing. I think we're probably closer to by the end of this year, we'll be probably closer to 100 new clients a month and 200 virtual assistants a month. Where I see it is just exponentially growing because the workforce, as you said, is moving out, mm -hmm. demand is still there, and there's and the growth of business and leveraging technology, and as a as an individual or a consumer, my expectation of, of high touch, but in a technology standpoint and quick responsiveness, I think it's only going to grow. Um, and as you kind of touched on earlier, John, you know, folks not wanting to work in those high area expensive locations, businesses really looking to attract the best and the brightest to perform the tasks they need in a more efficient manner uh, and a more cost effective manner. So I, I really see it growing. I think, as you mentioned, AI, I think AI is going to come alongside and really support the growth of this business mm -hmm. because you're at the, you know, at the end of the day, AI, you've got to teach it how to do, but there's only so many tasks that can really do that doesn't require human you know, interaction. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, I really see it as a game changer for clients because now I can, as an owner or as a, as a company, I can focus on what's most important driving my business forward and have a reassurance that the back office functions and detail and, and data is being taken care of. Yeah, no, and I, I agree. And I think, and, and like I said earlier, I think this is the big challenge now is for a lot of um, people starting businesses or organizations is just getting their head around that concept of a hybrid organization and and and, uh, and being able to operate with, as you said, people who are dispersed uh, across the globe, and and actually, I mean, we we've done it. We've run a virtual organization for a long time, like long before COVID and all of that. We did it actually as a strategic move, and it turned out to be probably one of the best things we ever did. And we saw productivity gains that you mentioned, right? right? Um, even when we had the last group that we had in a in a in an office was our our programmers in in um, in Eastern Europe in Slovakia. And yeah. they were the most reluctant people to go remote until COVID forced them to go remote. And now they didn't want to come back. They suddenly realized they could work just as well and they were more efficient and they were happier and all of it. It was quite an amazing turnaround. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the interesting thing uh, that a lot of our clients are talking about. They're just ha they're having pe trouble with people coming back to the yeah. office. You know, they want people to come back to the office, but they're struggling because to your point, those people during COVID moved to the to the nice location and moved out of the New Yorks mm -hmm. of the world, the LA's of the world, the Chicago's, the expensive locations. And now you can't find people to work, let alone find people at a cost of effect, effective manner. Um, and so a lot of my my clients are turning to us saying, okay, I, I've embraced the remote working. Mm -hmm. I've, I've adjusted my processes. Now I need folks that are dedicated and focused to execute against that. And that's really where virtual assistants come alongside and really improve your productivity. And obviously reduce your bottom line by being able to achieve that. Yeah. And like I said, I mean, that's uh, you have to start as a business. You have to start looking at how do I, you know, how can I accommodate this? Because it's coming for you because there are the point we just made a while ago. Um, it's hard to get talent because now talent because and the other part, as you mentioned, uh, I think earlier is, is a lot of these people don't want a full time job, don't want to work for one company. They want to, they, they've deliberately made that choice, uh, you know, to go out on their own or to go virtual, go to a company like yours. Correct. And, you know, I was just reading the Wall Street Journal, you know, we're seeing, you know, unemployment continue to reduce, but the demand is just growing exponentially for staff. And, you know, there's a, a huge need to get high quality folks. And those high quality folks, to your point of being a little more demanding, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we're able to kind of manage that process and, and provide those folks at a cost-effective manner, and then we manage them. We make sure, obviously, they work at your request based on what you want, but we're taking care of the headaches, you know, the HR side of things, the onboarding, those kind of things, mm -hmm. which allows you to really focus on driving your business forward. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, thanks again, Chris. Uh, all of Chris' information is going to be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about um, MedVA and BizVA. Certainly. So MedVA is focused purely in the healthcare space. 
And so that's work with doctors, dentists, and veterinary, handling really the, the four main use cases of patient communication and scheduling, insurance verification, eligibility, billing, claims management, and real-time medical scribing. So that's really taking care of all the patient-related mm-hmm. stuff that doesn't require touch. On the BizVA side, very focused on you know, handling, taking care of real estate, legal, finance, those back office functions that as a business really needs to sustain and keep working. And then I'm excited to, to announce that we're actually launching a new business called My Ortho VA, uh, which is going to be focused in the orthodontic space because we're seeing oh. such a huge shift in the orthodontic space on so digital. I mean, I know I have four children and we used to have to go to the orthodontist every month. Now there's technology out there. You take a photo. You submit it in and the digital assistants to kind of walk you through the process, which is fantastic. And we're seeing a huge uptake in that area. So, you know, that's really where I, I see the business. And like I said, we're growing exponentially. And I would love an opportunity to talk to your listeners and learn more about how we could come alongside and support them. And it's very easy. It's medva.com and bizva.com. You can book a call and we'd, we'd love to help you out and really make a difference to, to growing your business and success. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, all the information will be below here. I would encourage you to go check it out because if your if your business isn't at least looking at leveraging virtual resources, if it's not looking at you know operating in a more hybrid fashion, I mean, obviously there are maybe some businesses that can't, but generally speaking, any uh, there's a lot of businesses that can. If you're not looking at it right now, I think you're going to get left behind. To be perfectly honest, one hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Chris. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you.